Hi Alex, thank you for joining me today. I'd like to start by asking how you define social media. I think everyone's definition of social media is slightly different um, and I think uh, to put it into a little bit of context I think it's worth thinking about where the term came from uh, and so the term came from I think AOL in the early 90s, very early 90s when it was talking about how they could become a hub, a kind of mashup between uh, technology and communications and media. So in essence, how could they become a hub of a, a social space online? I think, you know, from the very beginning of computers, computers didn't have any power until they formed a network, which was very quickly after they were invented. Um, and so in essence, people have always tried to communicate through the computer. So for me, I think moving it on from the late 90s, early 2000s description of social media as a kind of two-way dialogue-based communication rather than just being a one-way monologue broadcast type communication. I think it's developed so that we have a massive range of what you would describe as social media from the very personal, so it's kind of sharing lol cats, through, through to sharing and community, through to collaborative production where you get things like Wikipedia and other collaborative online projects, through at the top end to collective action where people can come together for everything from malaria in East Africa, right through to very small collective projects where they, they come together online. But I think in its simplest form, there's no such thing as in, a, in the media world now, I don't think, as pure consumption media. So media is now is about, is about participation, it's about collaboration, it's about production. So in essence, I'm not sure social media exists anymore, but if you were to define it, then I suppose you could take any of the things I've said over the last you know, like 30 seconds and, and come up with your own definition. And what's important for pharma companies to consider when launching social media campaigns? Um, if pharmaceutical companies want to be involved in media and there's very few businesses that can survive in any way without being involved in media then to me they will have to be involved in social media because the two are integrated the two are now the same so in that sense um, I think what farmers should think about before it does it I think farmers should think very carefully about how it's possible to not do it and that might change the mindset a tiny bit with regard to the campaign I think it's best now that people think not necessarily of campaigns but more of commitments. I think it's more of a commitment. It um, doesn't mean to say you can't have time specific short burst type campaigns but they should form part of an integrated social business model which also has other aspects which are ongoing. So I think it's important first of all for farmer to understand that it's not a choice anymore. They have to be a social business. Taking that to one side and trying to be very pragmatic about it, before you do anything, obviously you need to understand what your problem you're trying to solve, what hard issue it is that you're trying to solve. Uh, and therefore it needs to be aligned with the objectives of the brand and with the company, with the corporation. You obviously need to understand the landscape, you need to understand what it is, you know, that you, what, what uh, landscape you're entering, whether you have credibility, of course how you're going to measure it. Uh, and I think above all, pharma needs to really understand and have in place a proper resource model so that they can actually manage this stuff properly. I think anybody can throw up a Facebook page, but in order to do this properly, the business needs to be integrated across all functions. It needs to be strategically led from the top and it needs to have a proper working functioning resource model so that it can manage the commitment over the long term. So how do you measure the success of a social media campaign? I think measurement within anything is very difficult to, to, to push measurements onto other people. Everyone will have very different objectives, everyone has a very different business and they're trying to achieve different things. Um, and so sometimes when you look at people uh, proclaiming other people's campaigns as a success based on publicly available data or metrics, I think it obviously can be very confusing and, and often wrong. Having said that, I think for me, um, this new form of media is not about people consuming messages, it's about people actively taking part. The reason that television consumption is going down and, and active use of the internet is going up is for that very reason, that people want to be collaborative, want to do something with, with media, they don't just want to consume it. So taking that on a step further, 
uh, there's a phrase that I use called action-based economy, which to describe what, to me, the social media economy is. And that is that you're trying to affect some kind of behavioural change for people. You're trying to actually affect their lives for the better. In essence, you're trying to get them to do something. So measurement for me should be around something that affects somebody's life. So an example of that is, say, for instance, um, the social media campaign for Psoriasis 360. Um, yes, it has Facebook, it has YouTube, it has a Twitter account. Um, yes, it's about community and it's about people coming together to share information. But at the heart of it, there's three things that we wanted people to do based on what we knew about patients who suffer from psoriasis. We knew that they didn't know how severe their condition was. We knew that they didn't know the impact fully, the impact on their life. So they may have lived with it for a long time and not realised the big effect it's having. Often people are, well, 50% of people with severe psoriasis are clinically depressed, for instance. And not surprisingly, because it's the case for a lot of people, but within psoriasis, they're not always that good at speaking to their doctor. So we have applications that affect those three things, which specifically affect the disease area that we're trying to work within. Those applications are across all of the social platforms as well as mobile as well. And really what we're measuring is how many people complete those. Because we know that for those people that complete something of that high value, it takes at least 10 minutes to do each one, you know, 60 to 90% of those will do something offline. So the idea is that as an action-based economy, we, we can put a kind of number on how many people we think may have gone back to their doctor, knowing how severe they are, knowing the impact it has on their lives, and being better able to articulate that to the physician which will have an actual impact in the, on, on their everyday life, hopefully. How many people like the page? How many people see the page? How many people visit the website? They're all nice, but they're contributory measures around those value conversions. So for me, it's going to be different every time depending on what you're trying to achieve, but I would still hold that you should think of it as an action-based economy. So what campaigns have you noticed, both within and outside your organisation, that you deem to be a success? OK, um, I think... Like I said before, and I don't just mean this uh, as a kind of clever way of not commenting on other people's work, because I will, um, but it is all very difficult sometimes to understand what a business was trying to achieve and therefore what the outcome was, what, whether they met their objectives. I mean, you know, you can look at twi uh, Twitter accounts with, say, you know, 12,000 people as opposed to 2,000, but it could be that the one with 2,000 is achieving more of the objectives that they wanted to achieve for their business or for the people they're trying to help. I know for a fact that a very small little Twitter account we have in psoriasis is very effective for people and you know is, is, is it meeting all of our objectives. So I think it, it's hard from the outside. Um, it's pretty obvious though what uh, businesses are trying to make strides in this area and therefore they're obviously, I would think, uh, probably doing a good job. So you look at companies like Boehringer, um, John Pugh is, a, is, is a, uh, I think a, a great leader for them in that field for, you know, within Boehringer. Uh, Andy Widger and Pfizer and the work that Pfizer are doing, I think they're doing a great job. There's some really good stuff there with Feel My Pain and all, all the rest of it. Sabine and Roche doing a fantastic job. I know recently Sanofi have really started to come to the fore with some of the diabetes work that they're doing. I think some of the stuff that Astra have done in the, in the US, especially around about the tweet chat that they had. Um, I think you could name lots of companies now that are starting to really do some really interesting, you know, powerful things. But the truth is, it's only they that know what they're measuring and what the success looks like for them and where strategically they want to go. It's certainly not a wasteland. And I think that the, the majority of the whinging in this area comes from external agencies and people that, I suppose, want people to do more or want people to do more of what they want to do, which I suppose is a different thing. But the truth is that actually, pharma is becoming quite active within this space. Um, but as a final point, being active, having a Facebook page, having a Twitter account, that isn't really the, the point. The point should be is can we have a change of philosophy of business culture which enables us to actually fundamentally change how we practice as a business. Uh, and I think that that is something where we're still, uh, the jury's still out, I think. How do you think Farm will adapt now that Facebook have disabled comment moderation on their pages? You know, I think it might come as a shock to some people, but... Facebook didn't design Facebook for pharmaceutical companies. Uh, and I think this discussion about Facebook no longer allowing comments to be disabled is one of the most ridiculous discussions that you'll ever get. The point I would say is, who in the hell is on Facebook without comments? Why? What were they trying to achieve? What exactly were they trying to do? And, and to me, the interesting point will be is that those pages that survive, because they realise that the 
the benefit of actually having a community, of having comments, of having people share it, of having people take part, is actually worth the resource that it takes to put into monitoring those pages. Because I don't think it's necessarily the risk. I think it's about, are you prepared to invest the time and effort into actually managing those pages on a 24-hour basis, or are you not? And if you're not, the question would be, is why did you throw that thing up there in the first place? And I don't mean to, to bring this down to very black and white. I know there are some grey areas, but really, you know, Google didn't produce Google Plus for, for pharma, surprise, surprise, or for business. Facebook is not there for pharmaceutical companies. These things are there for people to connect with each other. And businesses, on the other hand, to try and connect with their customers. But the idea that you would want to be involved in social space without being social seems to me absolutely ridiculous. And I think if there's companies that are not prepared to monitor their comments, either the page wasn't valuable enough, or if they fundamentally disagree with the concept of people commenting on, on their assets, or the assets that they place onto Facebook, then to me it's probably good riddance that they, that they leave. How do you think mobile devices are impacting social media use in pharma? I think that the question to, to ask is not how mobile affects pharma, first of all, but what difference mobile is having on the whole of society. So it was one thing for us to understand the power that social media has by linking the world together and socialising businesses, socialising the entire planet in that sense, or most of it, um, through what are essentially static networks. But when you think about how that translates when you are continually connected wherever you are, you can instantly see the impact that could have. So for Everything from mixed or mediated reality when it comes to finding your way through, you know, mashups of Google Maps, or possibly for healthcare, um, point of care crowdsourced, you know, differential diagnosis applications which help and connect doctors to other doctors all around the world to help with complex issues, or a whole host of other things. Um, I think there's two parts of mobile to think about. The, the first is the high-end smartphone type of, of uh, mobile that we're talking about. And there's two parts to that. So for me, yes, applications. You know, we, we should think about how we can... You know, and pharma's very good at building things. So it, it instantly understands how an application, for instance, for psoriasis or you know, to, to measure heart rate or for diabetes can work because pharma's used to building things like that and then pushing them out to people. Uh, and that's fine. But we also need to think that people want to access their information through their mobile device. And I think we also need to challenge at that top end the very concept of mobile because I think that I'm not sure that people say when they're out with their iPad think I'm going to go mobile or that they're looking for information on the iPhone they think oh, you know I'm going mobile I think they just think that they want the information that they require you know through that device and I think it, it, it's really the web is now becoming ubiquitous in the sense that people expect to be able to access it because so much of their life is invested in it wherever they are so it's an essential that we get that part right the other part of mobile is the very simple nature of very cheap mobiles actually connecting people together in developing parts of the world. You know, this talk of Apple producing, I suppose, a, a cheap iPhone, an iPhone Lite, but already we're seeing use of mobile health, say in East Africa with malaria and there's a whole host of other examples. So I think that, that this idea of, of, of how important the mobile phone is to us as a person, how it becomes so much more than a phone, um, I think that that is very, very powerful for health and very, very powerful for people and therefore very powerful for a pharmaceutical company. But we just need to make sure we don't focus on building applications because that's something we're comfortable with and think more about how we can connect people together through the mobile in order to produce something together or to collaborate. Or, on the other hand, how to help people in, de in the developing world, for instance, access information and healthcare that maybe they couldn't access any other way. What key things have you learned from the social media projects you've been involved with? The first thing that I've learned is that with the right process in place and the right guidance and the right understanding of resourcing and also the right ability, I suppose, to develop the right ability to explain risk-benefit in a positive sense and not a negative one, that there is nothing really that you, you can't do, um, but that it's not, nothing is worth doing just for the sake of it. Just because it's on Facebook doesn't mean to say it's not bad. Just because it's on Twitter doesn't mean to say it's not bad. Unless you're trying to solve a hard problem which you are the right people to solve, then 
to be honest, you know, it, it, just doing it for its own sake is not an achievement. And I think we've gone through that period now where just having a Facebook page on, say, diabetes was, was applauded, whereas hopefully now we're moving very quickly into a period where people might say that that's not really good enough, and actually that the landscape of diabetes is very rich and very complicated, and maybe it's some, you know, the future of diabetes and social media is about something much, you know, more powerful than, than a Facebook community. And I think that those are the, the bigger questions that we're going to have to ask. So I think, you know, th what I've learnt is that there's nothing you can't do. What I've also learnt is that a lot of people want to scratch the surface and make money or make their credibility or make their name through saying that they are experts in mobile or experts in social media and actually talking really just about tactical articulations of, of, of that without thinking about the real power that this will have. So for me, if you think about it on a scale, um, it's easy to do the personal stuff, as in stand up for, against cancer or let's end world hunger. And that's fine, you know, but you know, you're not going to end world hunger and you're unlikely to cure cancer through that on a Facebook page. Of course we can share more and there's a sharing part and then there's the community side where if we could became actual genuine members and active parts of communities rather than just thinking about trying to build what we would term a community, you know, that could be incredibly powerful for pharma. But I think beyond that, you know, we're very big businesses, a lot of us, anyway. And there's a lot of power there. And I think that if we were to set our sights to something much more potent than that, which is actually community collaboration, collaborative production, trying to produce something for the greater good of humanity. I think the idea was um, from the 1960s with the tragedy of the commons that if you share something, then people will inherently destroy something that they don't own. And I think in 2001 with you know, Wikipedia, that was still an inherent belief and you can still, you can look back at the uh, comment at the time saying that it won't work because people won't do that, they will destroy something they don't own. Or we can see that people don't do that. And I think pharma needs to work out where its communal good is going to come from. Where, how is it going to take part and bring people together to produce something around health and around medicines, which is for everybody's good and which is frees people to take collaborative, you know, to take a collaborative role in that, rather than us just trying to control our messages. And I suppose on top of that as well, you look at civic good, um, and I think when we look back at the revolution in social media for health, it will not be uh, a Facebook page, it will be big data. It will be, for the first time, the capacity to bring lots of information around how people manage their health and how people manage their medicines together in one place. and something like patients like me, they say in their openness policy that they want people to share. We've actually been told from the very beginning of our, of our lives, of taking charge of our own medical histories and all that, that everything you know, that patients like me want you to do, you shouldn't do. You should keep your medical history safe. You should keep it private. You should not discuss you know, the conditions you have with other people, especially if they could be prejudiced. And I think that the big change for um, healthcare will be if we can collate this data together so that we can better understand how people manage their health and how people work with and use their medicines. And I suppose that comes to something of translational medicine, of that time it takes from an academic paper to go from, you know, I suppose, academia from, from the page into the consulting room. And I think for me, that's where we need to focus is how we can bring people together to massively increase the quality of the work we do across our entire business, not just produce a Twitter page. And finally, it's been reported that you're the most followed person in Twitter. Why do you think that is? I suppose the honest answer is that um, I don't know why I'm the most followed person on Twitter. Or if I am, there could be someone out there that just doesn't put themselves forward as a farmer person who's got more followers than me. You know, well, I've got 8,000 or something, so I'm sure there's someone out there with more. I think... Um, if I was to, I mean, I can't answer the question as to why, but all I can say is that, for me, I think that there's a, a lot of discussion within healthcare and healthcare social media, which is very, very specific to the, to, to, to the field that we're in. So a lot of people will share information, which is very good information, around how social media has been used to do this in health or that. But to me, my inspiration does not come from medical comms or from healthcare. My inspiration comes from technology companies a lot of the time, and also from people who study the impact of the internet on society. So I would look to someone like Clay Shirky or Tim Wu or James Gleek uh, and I would look to the, to, 
the technology blogs and the things that I read, and then try and think about how that could be translated into health, or what that might mean for healthcare. So I suppose, in a roundabout way, I'm saying that a lot of the things that I would tweet out, I enable people to think themselves about how that might relate to health, rather than just having to read a specific piece by probably someone they've read many times before about how currently, supposedly, social media is being used to improve healthcare. So I'm not sure that 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 answers the question, but I think that we should all think a bit more broadly about you know how we're, we're tackling technology uh, and communications within the pharma business and not just concentrate on a very small group of us that are talking you know amongst ourselves in a kind of echo chamber about you know healthcare social media. So Alex, thank you for your time. PharmaForum.com is the dynamic online information and discussion portal for the pharmaceutical industry.